Welcome back to Fragments of Hemp. Yesterday we took a quick look through uh, Will's life just before the car accident, and today we look through his conservative grandma's life. That'll be... you know that's gonna be exciting. Sharon was always reading. She taught art history. Never really made much money. <laughs> We've got an artiste in the family too. Well, artiste histories. But uh, we did not end up getting a job in that, as one might expect. Plant! Tell me about the plant, G Moms. That plant was about all Will saw of the outside when he was young. He preferred to make up stories rather than play outdoors. Creative type. Sharon, Will's mother. Met my James when he was working in London. She's American. They broke up for three years, and she took Will to America with her. There was always music playing when I got to the house. Some awful racket. <laughs> Not the sort of thing the child should be hearing. I always turned it off. Oh. The rats, the fog, shrine, the spear. James loved such peculiar books, all those horror things. That one about the rats. Dreadful things, really. I don't know what he saw in them. Oh, can I crouch? What is this? Oh, you can right-click to go backwards. I've noticed that's pretty common in exploration games. You can just kind of use only the mouse. And Well, I wouldn't do that. I guess it's neat. Will's birth wasn't very easy. But he got here. He was never going to have brothers or sisters after, though. I suppose I sound old-fashioned. But there are appropriate ways to raise a child. I only wanted Will to grow up happy and normal. Normal. Everybody wants to be normal. I got, I got, I got secrets for you kids. There's no such thing as normal. And if there was, it wouldn't be a particularly good thing. It would be a very safe thing, but... Uh, I remember that night yeah. because Will had been... Unusually quiet all evening. He told me that he'd been in a fight. Will sounds very familiar. A right boy now. had been calling a dark skinned girl names. Will had tried to stop the other boy, but he had been punched in the stomach. I asked him if he had cried. And he said yes. I told him that big boys don't cry. I remember him asking me then, what do big boys do when they're sad? I told him that when he grew up, he would be a good man, able to stand up for others. I suppose I didn't answer his question. Dang it, G-moms. Freaking not answering our questions. <laughs> I was the type that you know, took a swing at bullies when I was a kid, and <clears throat> hell, it worked, so <laughs> no objections. Um, not everybody is lucky enough to have that as an option, like a safe option, and I wasn't really bullied as much as, uh, you know, I wasn't ever any kind of horror story or anything, but uh, a few people did end up taking some punches to the face, and I mean, sometimes you do what you gotta do. But, uh, no, no malice towards anybody who, uh, didn't do that, but, uh, sometimes what you gotta do. Even though he was hurt, I told him he was right to try to stop the bully. <laughs> See, G-Moms isn't that bad. Oh, I had one of these things. The marble was much smaller, but... Now I think about it. I don't think he was very comforted. <laughs> yeah. So now we're like little Will's height, I guess. When he was going to bed, Will tripped on a toy. I remember carrying him. He was trying so hard not to cry. He was so small in my arms. 
I've never forgotten that feeling. Small. Oh. Yeah, about the left mouse thing, I guess it is a pretty good accessibility feature. Convenient way to have one hand control. It's funny the things well, that you remember. A mix of small things making up a lifetime. I always like this sort of rooms where I guess it's like, you know, you have less space, but I like the like weird slanty shanty sort of whatever thing. The little eaves, I guess. Um, our attic, my parents' attic, um, it's like they have a livable attic and a livable basement. It's kind of ridiculous. Like I've never, like that's not very common, but, um, yeah, the attic is pretty nice and, uh, it's small cause it does, it's an eaved roof. And so like 50% of like the, the attic is much, much narrower than the rest of the house, but it's, uh, it's still kind of neat to have, you know, a livable attic. Oh, he's into computers. Oh, he's got a Rubik's Cube. I was never into... Well, you probably heard my rantings about puzzles. I, I took him like to puzzles. bed to read him a story. I like to make things, not solve puzzles. I like to help people and entertain and so on. But puzzle... Just, just the pure puzzle-solving aspect never appealed to me too much. Uh, there's some puzzle games I do enjoy, but generally... He went through a phase of being scared of ghosts. Sharon would buy him ghost storybooks. And he had that pop-up haunted house book too. Now, as a kid, I, I didn't like horror stuff, but I always wanted stuff that could make me scared. I never really particularly found it. I, uh... It's one of those games that just makes me rant about real life. And I, I like games like that. I don't know how interesting it is necessarily for a viewer, but I think, I really like games that make you think about yourself personally, your own life, and just reflect. I think that's, I think that's a really good quality to have. It's not necessarily the most exciting thing, but, uh, hey, it's not something you get every day either. I always look carefully to reassure him. Oh, she's looking for ghosts. I was wondering what that was. But yeah, I, uh, I really liked horror games that were good. Um, I did not find many horror games I considered good, though. Um, it was mostly just Silent Hill, fantastic series, um, Fatal Frame. And I always thought, ironically, I always thought ghosts were so dumb. Like, the least scary thing, like, just childish and dumb. But uh, Fatal Frame 2 makes them pretty good. Well, Fatal Frame as a series, it makes ghosts work, which I think is no... Small feet. I always had to check the room for ghosts before he would settle down. I was never one to ask about ghosts. I did once have like a night terror, whatever that is, where you're like awake and you're still dreaming and seeing like horrible crap. I had that exactly once, never again really in my life, but I saw like um, dinosaurs coming out of the walls. I loved dinosaurs as a kid. They're still cool, but uh, I have less. You know what? There was these series of books, dinosaur books, like really detailed, and they would be like about the life of each individual dinosaur. Does anybody know what those books were? Because I checked Google and I couldn't find. Like, I just found like they were written kind of for kids, but they're not like children's like storybooks exactly. Um, like they're not like picture books for tiny babs. They're more like you know for adolescents that are you know able to read a thing and they're like about the life of like either um, it would usually be like about a um, you know an herbivore and it would kind of survive a couple of encounters with predators and see some of its friends die or it would be kind of like a hungry predator living out its life and you know some just some neat stuff and each book would be a different dinosaur I don't know if we still have those they might be in storage I remember that night clearly I remember promising him that I would always protect him, no matter whatever happened. Of course, he was thinking of ghosts still, but maybe I knew then. 
that his life wasn't going to be so easy. What, what we read in G Moms? What we read? I was reading Grimm's fairy tales to him. I liked those much more than the new versions that they kept on coming out with back then. It was a strange story that night, called The Ungrateful Son. It went something like this. Music Once upon a time, a man and his wife were eating a roast chicken for dinner. I can look around at this thing. When the man saw his father, a very old man, walking along the road towards them, the man didn't want to share, and so he hid the chicken out of sight. His father came, bid them a good day, and went on his way. See you, Dad. The man was happy with himself, told his wife to get the chicken and put it on the table again. It's gonna eat him. But it's the be chicken, chicken had transformed into a giant oh, toad, I called it. which leapt onto the face of the man. The toad wouldn't leave his face and hissed at the wife when she came near, so she didn't dare approach to help. The man had to feed the toad every day from then on, or it would bite his face, and he never rested for the remainder of his life. The old fairy tales were a little bit extreme, weren't they? Like I say, it was a very strange story. You're mildly a jerk. Yeah, you're just gonna curse you for the rest of your life, bro. That's what happens. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the real world, people do horrible things all the time, and they get promoted because of it. Will was asleep before I finished it, which was probably a good thing. Thanks for how fantastical and ridiculous they are. Fairy tales still have kind of more ideal sense than actual reality. Flip the lights out. I felt strange after reading it. I wondered about whether I really could keep him safe. The world is so unpredictable. I would do my best like all good grandmothers. I could still see him sleeping there now, like it was only yesterday. Great orange sun in the window. It's kind of funny, this game has shift or walk faster, and a lot of exploration games that could really use that feature tend to miss it. Oh, I think this is a new story. I never story. thought it would be easy, but I had raised James, so I thought I would be ready for anything from my grandson Will. The world changes so quickly. All right, I think we're gonna split this into a second video, or into another video. Oh, we got trinkets, heck yeah. You got, you got one eye fish, you got Mr. Giraffe Man, you got one of those, and you got little deer friend. But yeah, I think this is like another chapter of the story, so to speak. So I think we're gonna split here.